In this video we hope to go into a little more detail explaining acids and bases and mainly focusing on the Arrhenius theory of acids and bases. So there's been several theories about what an acid or a base is but in 1887 Arrhenius proposed these definitions. Acids are substances that ionize in aqueous solution to form hydrogen ions and bases are substances that dissociate in aqueous solution to form hydroxide ions. And we already know that ionization and dissociation are very similar and it depends on whether it was originally an ionic bond or not. But in science, theories constantly need to be revised. Sometimes they don't live up and we've got to see why not, see where we went wrong and try a new definition and ideally a theory is able to do two things it is able to both explain and predict so explain a past event or evidence that we actually observed why did it happen and predict if I do such and such a thing what do I expect will happen now of those two predict is the more powerful one it's also harder to achieve by having a good theory so indeed scientists have come and revised Arrhenius's definitions of acids and bases and we now consider acids to be not only things that ionize an aqueous solution but we can add to that or cross that out and instead say they're substances that react with water to form hydrogen ions and we're actually going to change the hydrogen ions to be hydronium ions because we also know that if you have a hydrogen, an H+, plus, it's basically just a proton, right? Because if you take a hydrogen, one proton and one electron, you strip off its electron and you've only got a proton left. Well, these positively charged things, we see evidence scientifically that they would attract themselves to a water molecule and we're going to consider this to be the hydronium ion. So it's H3O and it has a one plus charge. There is also a possible change to the definition of bases. Bases are substances that dissociate in aqueous solution or react with water. So for bases we're going to need either one and we are still looking for the formation of the OH minus, the hydroxide ions. Okay, so that's a couple of modifications that modern science has made to Arrhenius' definitions. Let's look at a few quick examples of how this would work. So let's take a, a weak base like acetic acid and I'm going to call it a liquid. I'm going to suppose I have it in its pure form and according to Arrhenius' definition this will react with water and we would expect it to form a hydronium ion if it is indeed acidic. So it's going to form one other thing as well but what's actually going on here is we are taking an H plus off of our acetic acid molecule and we are going to attach that to the water to get our hydronium so what's left is the acetate anion CH3COO- okay so we used to write this as just an ionization just an H plus splitting off but this is how we would write it in the modern form of reacting with water and forming a hydronium ion so let's look at a base if we would take sodium hydroxide, again purely in its liquid form, I should say actually in its solid form, it is solid at room temperature. Now if we have a substance like this that has the hydroxide anion in it already, we're going to stick with dissociation. So OH minus, if we put this in aqueous solution, would dissociate from the Na plus sodium, both of them being aqueous, and this is basically our traditional definition of a base but now the modern definition has broadened it to also allow the possibility of reaction with water so let's take something like ammonia which is also acidic uh, basic sorry and assume we have some pure liquid ammonia if we react that with liquid water we would like to see the basic properties so we should expect to see an OH minus being formed somehow so what's actually going on? Well to form a base what we typically have is one of the H's from our water is joining up with our other substance so in this case we are going to get an NH4 plus ion, the ammonium ion 
and the hydroxide is what's left when you take an H plus off of a water molecule. So this is our second example of a base and you can see that we would not have known how to do this if we wouldn't have added that clause to our definition that says react with water. Now there's some substances that act as acids or as bases that are not quite as easy to see what's going to happen. They actually take two steps to explain it. So let's look for example at sodium carbonate. So the first step we're going to show with our sodium carbonate is just going to be to dissociate it. So imagine we put this in water. What do you expect to happen? Well, it'll form some sodium cations, two of these, for every one of the carbonate anions. And so far there's nothing acidic or basic about that. But now we want to choose one of those two substances to explain the basic properties of sodium carbonate and we have a lot of other ionic compounds of sodium like NaCl or table salt that are not basic so probably it's this carbonate thing that is basic and how we're going to explain that the carbonate is basic we're going to do that in another step another reaction so we can say that that CO3 2 minus the carbonate anion now according to our definition will react with water and it forms the hydroxide anion and again it does that by stealing one of the hydrogens off the water that's where our, our hydroxide is left and the hydrogen goes and joins the carbonate to form HCO3 minus and we're fine to do this because hydrogen carbonate is something that likes to exist it's a common polyatomic ion now again we do this because we know that sodium carbonate has basic properties so we could almost say we were answering the question why is sodium carbonate basic and this is what we predict or how we explain rather that sodium carbonate is basic whether or not that actually happens well we, we would have to try it right if it was a case that we didn't know whether it was an acid or a base we would have to try it and see if it actually happened. Before we move on further on that idea, I want to explain what neutralization looks like according to this theory. So because we're now talking about hydroniums instead of uh, hydrogen ions, our neutralization reaction is going to look like a hydronium reacting with a hydroxide and well what would we expect to happen if we would take one of the hydrogens off here and put it over there we would have a water left on both in both places so we would expect this to form two water molecules so that's a nice simplified neutralization reaction and what I want to look at next is this idea of predicting so so far we were able to explain we can use these two definitions to explain why something is acidic or basic but what about predicting Now the question is, can we predict whether this hydrogen phosphate ion will act as an acid or as a base? Let's see if we can write equations that match with Arrhenius' modified definitions. So we could say that the hydrogen phosphate might react with water. And let's just imagine one of our hydrogens went and joined the hydrogen phosphate. We would get an H2PO4 minus which is called the dihydrogen phosphate anion it's also a common polyatomic ion it likes to exist and all that good stuff and on the other side we're going to get an OH minus a hydroxide ion so we could say huh, it looks like this thing could be basic but on the other hand we could write a very similar equation let's take our original anion again and react it with water and this time ask ourselves if we can take the hydrogen off the hydrogen phosphate and add it to the water and see what happens then well then it's going to look like a PO4 3 minus so if just a phosphate anion which also likes to exist with a hydronium ion and now we can say that this thing is acting as an acid so are we able to predict which of these is going to be the case? Both of them perfectly follow Arrhenius' modified definitions. So the answer is no, we cannot use this to predict. 
the modified Arrhenius definitions of acids and bases are still not powerful enough for us to use for predicting. So this theory would still need some more modification in order to be able to do that. We are not going to go into that modification right now. I just want to point that out so you're aware of it. While we're here, I'd like to point out two other terms related to acids and bases. The first one is amphiprotic. And if you think of that root amphi, like amphibian or amphibious vehicle, it can act, it can live in multiple places, for example, multiple types of terrain. This is when something can act as multiple things in terms of acids and base, so it can act as either an acid or a base. And we just had an example, like this hydrogen phosphate right there was amphiprotic. It, we just wrote an equation that it could act as an acid and one that it can act as a base. The second term I want to mention is polyprotic. That is when something can act as an acid or base multiple times. So again, poly meaning many. It has many protons, so it can act as an acid, for example. Um, there's some examples here on this page. I'm just going to give you another one, H2SO4. If you let that react as an acid according to our definitions, one H will come off and you'll be left with HSO4 minus. Then you can take another proton off and then you will get SO4 two minus forming. So you'll see that it acted as an acid two times in a row. So those are just two other related terms. This was in general a summary of Arrhenius' theories of acids and bases, modified by the way scientists currently understand them. And we saw that it was able to explain evidence, but not so well able to predict what we did not know.